Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all those who have subscribed, all those who continue to watch my videos. I want to just um, remind you to like, share, um, hit the notification bell, and continue to um, encourage your friends to subscribe to my channel. So today, let's talk. We're going to talk about um, landlords. So this is a big issue here in Ghana, and I have to make you all aware of what you may or may not experience. And so this is not a diaspora issue. This is not just um, a Jamaican issue. It has nothing to do with any of that. It is all about everyone. Everyone has had this experience. Well, not, well, not ever. of course, you know, the majority of those who rent have had or ran into something of the sort. And what I mean by this, let's just start with me. So when I first got here, I was able to rent a 2-2 apartment, beautiful apartment right across the ocean. I thought it was pretty, the price was pretty reasonable. It was good. It was actually worth it. Um, the place was self-contained. It was well done. Whomever did the contract or did the work did a pretty decent job. However, during the course of my time, so my lease was for two years. So during the course of my time, you could see in certain parts of the apartment, because we were near the ocean, I don't know what happened during construction, but apparently the painting or the material that used for plastering the wall either did not cure or they didn't mix it properly. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Or the paint was too thin. In any case, you could see different discoloration in the walls. And it wasn't not just my apartment. It was the adjacent apartment next door to me. And um, so we continuously had issues. We would complain. You know, well, not necessarily complain. We would report the issue. The landlord would, landlady, she would have her painter come by. He did some kind of treatment. Um, to the wall to try to um, stop the deterioration of the wall and that didn't work so throughout the course of the two years I think for me mostly it was maybe about a year yeah for about a year it was good and then immediately after it just started getting worse and worse but my neighbor she constantly had issues with her walls and she would constantly report the same issue. The same thing would come. The painter would come treat it. And so, you know, what do you do in that scenario or situation, right? It's kind of like a no-brainer. They have to come, probably have to come in, scrape the entire wall completely off, replaster, put some sort of treatment, mix the treatment in the plaster, and then move forward. Once that's cured and dry properly, then they can do some, some painting. Um, that's neither here. So, and then the other problem we ran into while we were there. So here in Ghana, constantly, if you're on the city water, you're going to have outages, right? So they would turn the water off. Uh, and so for this particular time, um, the landlady, she said, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a pump system to our polytank. Polytank is the water source that we we store water in for emergencies, things like that, so for the polytank, so that when the city water goes out, we have access to water from the pump. It took us almost two and a half months or more before that could have gotten installed, and we went back and forth, not just with the landlady, but with the property manager. He, he was staying in Accra. Never came to Cape Coast from the whole time that we were living there. Never came to Cape Coast. He would call on the phone or text message. And then while he's doing that, he's giving us feedback as if we're in the wrong. Anyway, so we went through that phase for a couple of months. We finally got things resolved. Um, you know, myself and one of the other tenants, we went straight down to the water company. Water company and claimed they didn't even have a clue that we weren't getting any water. And as a result of that, they had to come out, do some pipe replacement, fitting replacement. They had to do some work. And that helped us a great deal. So we had both resources. But 
Um, so that was some of the things that we encountered, right? Um, so then, you know, during the end, at the end of the two years, she decided she'd not want to renew um, the lease agreement for the majority of us. So it was four apartments in the building itself. And she decided that she didn't want to renew the lease agreement for at least three of us. So there was one left, yeah, three of us. And so I had to figure out my way out. So it, during that time, it was like a, a three, four month period where I knew that I wasn't going to get renewed. So I opt to find somewhere else to, to move to. And so in doing so, I stumbled on my current residence, which is, um, it's a brand new building. <clears throat> and it reminded me of a cottage. So I fell in love with it right away. It was nice and spacious enough. It gave me what I needed. It had enough room. It's a two bedroom, one bathroom, living, dining, kitchen. Um, gave me enough space for me to be able to work with. And I like that. The living room is actually pretty decent size, so I can't complain. But my thing is um, where I got caught. This is where I got caught. And so there are times when um, these landlords, if you tell them too much about your personal life, they take advantage of it. So I had explained to this man that I needed to be in the apartment by February, no later than the by end of January, the latest. And I kept pushing and, pr and asking him, you know, he kept telling me, yes, 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 it's going to be done, da, da, da. But, so initially, I paid a year in advance. And that's not unusual here in Ghana. Typically here in Ghana, you pay a year in advance, at most, no more than two years. Child, why did I get taken in into a five-year lease, which is illegal here in Ghana? five-year lease so he kept telling me the land because I told him that I had a flight I needed to leave and I was very distraught about time he kept dragging 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 everything out telling me that oh the money is not enough he needs the material is expensive this that, and the other just and so I felt like I was in between a rock and a hard place because now I had already paid him at least two years money up in advance for him to be able to finish the apartment. And I needed to get on a plane. I need to move my stuff. I need to unpack, finish packing, get out of my, my, my previous apartment completely, get a truck to move all my items, get somebody to help me load, unload, do all this stuff. Right. And so I was on a serious, serious time restraint and it really hurt me so much that I had to give this man that much money because he would not finish the place unless I kept giving him money. And it was so disheartening because I needed to get on a plane. I needed to get myself back to the States because my daughter was pregnant and um, she needed me there. And I could not miss that. That was something I was not... I would never want to miss that. I want to be there. I wanted to be there for her. So what I'm saying to you is when you come, um, be very mindful of the manipulation. And again, this is not, uh, this is not based off of a diasporan thing or a Jamaican thing or American thing or wherever West thing. No, it is a Ghana thing. Because I know Ghanaians right now who would complain about the same thing. Landlord took their money, said they were going to do all of this stuff and never followed through. Never, ever, ever followed through. I remember one lady, an acquaintance of mine, took the money and he gave her such a hard time for him to do the right thing. Gave the, the tenant the hardest time in the world. So... I don't understand the mindset when it comes down to landlords. I really, really, and truly don't. I'm not saying that's for every landlord, but I'm saying it's a serious, serious problem here in Ghana. And it's across the board. I don't care what anybody says. It's across the board. I don't care where you are in Ghana. You're going to run into something like this. And then the other thing is, you know, they have rent control department. 
Now, I can opt to go to the rent control department, which is something I've been thinking about because the issues that I've been having, he's been dragging it out and don't want it, have not, you know, actually did not want to put the effort into getting these items completed. And so I had to, so a friend of mine introduced me to someone who I had, had a little bit of clout, contacted him and kind of encouraged him to come in and do some of the things that he was supposed to do. And so little by little, so when I initially, okay, let me backtrack. When I initially moved in, it was in February and I had to leave the next, I only had 24 hours to actually stay in the apartment. So I had to leave right away. So when I got back in July, that's when I started noticing a lot of different things that weren't completed. Typically here in Ghana, they're supposed to tile your kitchen completely wall to wall from top to bottom. And they're supposed to tile your bathroom wall to wall from top to bottom. He did not do any of that. They're supposed to paint inside and out. As you can see, I just have the plaster on the wall. He has not even brought, not even an ounce of paint to even try to see if he's going to paint the place or not. He said to me, oh, I should paint. And then he'll reimburse me. I said, absolutely not. I would never put another Peswas in this place. Anything that I put or change that I make in this place, I'm taking it with me. Guaranteed. Uh, he promised me a kitchen. I ended up with nothing, just a piece of, uh, two pieces of wood straight across the wall from one end of the wall to the next, uh, nothing. So I ended up having to get some, a cab, uh, carpenter to come in and create it, a nice little design for me, which is what I have now. And so when I'm ready to leave, I'll take that with me. Unless he's willing to pay for it, which I know is not going to happen, I'm taking that with me. So I say this. Be very, very mindful of these habits for of landlords. Don't ever go into it where um, you pay them the money, especially with an unfinished. So here's my thing. With an unfinished structure, you can sign an agreement with the landlord and have them relinquish the work onto you. And you find a couple of uh, contractors that is able to finish the work for you. It probably cost you so much money less it will save you a bundle of money okay so that's one option or if you find a place that's already completed then you need to so you find a place that's already completed fully ready to move in turnkey ready to move in all you have to do is moving your furniture and so that is the best way to go but even still with that you got to make sure your water is intact your water uh, whatever water source is in place and you don't have to worry about that. Make sure your lighting, everything is in place so that you don't have to worry. Make sure you get your own meter for just for your water. Get, get your own meter for your light because that's also very, very important. And so I just wanted to bring that to y'all attention and to let you know that um, even though despite all of that, you know, this is a good place to be. Let your spirit guide you throughout the process so that... Um, you're not overwhelmed. So if you know all these things ahead of time, you can look for the signs, see things that are happening before you even make a decision to move forward into um, a lease agreement with a landlord or landlady that is not forthcoming with what they promised. Or if you can get it in writing, that's also good. So then you can take that information to the police department and say, hey, look, I have everything in writing. This is what needs to happen, and then they can take the necessary step to um, hold the person accountable. So I just wanted to bring you that um, information so you have that ahead of time. And um, as again, keep liking, keep subscribing. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. And thank you again for watching all my videos. I hope that you continue to Support me in all my endeavors, and I appreciate all that you are doing for me. Thank you. All right. See you next time.